All right, so we've done 2D moments, right? Uh, I, I just like to do force times perpendicular distance. If you need to, break them up to their components. If you need to, make sure that distance is perpendicular. Uh, but 2D, force times distance. But 3D, R cross F. And you can do R cross F for two, 2D moments as well. But I like for 3D moments about a point, the moment about a point is R cross F, where R is a position vector from the point to the force. But now, sometimes we only care about the, not the total moment, but how much of that moment is rotating about this axis. Maybe we're concerned about the moment about a certain axis, all right? So, if we want the moment about an axis, here's not the total moment, but just how much of that moment is rotating about this particular axis, uh, we could take the total moment, R cross F, and if we only want the projection on a, a certain axis, not the projection, but if we only want to know the component that's along a certain line, uh, we can dot product. We can take the um, total moment and dot it with the unit vector of that particular axis we are looking for. So, for example, if if we want, hey, what's the moment about the BC axis? We would take the unit vector of BC and dot it with R cross F. And that would give us, you all know mathematically what would happen here if we've got two vectors that are cross product, the uh, output is a vector. But then if we dot product two vectors, you know what you do when you dot product two vectors, you take the I component times the I component plus the J component times the J component plus the K component times the K component, and then you combine those. Uh, but anyway, if you dot two vectors together, you only get a magnitude. So this is only going to give us a magnitude of the moment, and so this is what I'm going to do right here. And so, so here's our equation right here. Now, the magnitude of the moment about an axis equals u dot r cross f, right? Equals u dot r cross f. That kind of rolls off the tongue, maybe. Let's be, uh, let's look at this even more carefully and closely. Uh, if we want the magnitude of the moment about the BC axis, we would take the unit vector of the BC axis and dot it with the r. So the r is a position vector from here to here, it's kind of like what we did right here, you know, for it's from the point to the force here, it's from the axis to the force, from the axis to the force, right, that R is from the axis to the force, and actually it's from anywhere on the axis to anywhere on the line of action of the force, so uh, sometimes you have a lot of options, and you will get the same answer, the same magnitude of the moment about the axis, uh, as long as you're cons as long as you take an R that goes from the axis to the force. Let's write out some of those and just reiterate even more. All right, so this gives us not a vector, but this is the magnitude. Magnitude of the moment caused by this force this 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 is the main thing you know what moment is this force causing this is the magnitude of the moment caused by that force about you know if this is if this is bc right here then that's the magnitude of the moment about bc axis um the u let's look at this this u is a unit vector of the BC axis. Uh, how are we going to get that unit vector of the BC axis? Most times we're going to take R over R and this might be different from from this R. Right? These are not the same R. This is the of the axis. So maybe we take RBC over magnitude of RBC. Remember back, back this is kind of dimensions if we want unit vector for dimensions. And then this right here, let's see, is the position vector 
from the axis to the force. From the axis to the force. So, for instance, let's say this is the BC axis. And, you know, let's say the force goes from D to E. Its line of action is from D to E. Uh, we might have a lot of options. We might go from B to D, right? R, B to D, R, uh, C to D, R, C to E, R, B to E. Sometimes we have three or four different options for the R that we can use. And let me emphasize, again, these R's, this R right here, is the one that goes from the axis to the force. But the R you use in here is very different. That, that's just the R of the axis. Of the axis. All right. And lastly, uh, this could come out negative. Could come out negative. Um, how could it come out? I, I put absolute value signs right there. Those absolute value signs just mean uh, it's, just, it's, the, it's not a vector. It's a magnitude. What would it mean if this comes out negative? If this comes out negative, we took our unit vector from B to C. Um, so if it comes out negative, then it is in the opposite direction of the unit vector that you use. So if you use a unit vector that pointed from B to C and your answer came out negative, it's, it is a moment that's pointed from C to B. Okay? So if it comes out negative, then um, it's not in the direction f that your unit vector was pointed. It's, it's exactly opposite. And now, you know, moments are, are rotating about that using the right-hand rule. Your thumb is pointed uh, in that direction opposite of the way that you thought it was. Okay, I think we're about ready, but let me show you my, not secret, but my shortcut into doing this math. All right, this is a cross product, then a dot product, but I do them all in one, I do them all in one step right here. So if I want the, mo the magnitude of the moment about axis BC, uh, it is equal to u dot r cross f. Right, it's equal to u dot r cross f. And so instead of doing the i, j, k right here, and then taking all the values of the u, and taking each component of u, multiplying times its, um, the r cross f's component of, taking the i component of u, dotted with the, I component of R cross F and the J component of U times the J component of R cross F and adding them up. Uh, we can do that to uh, all in one step if we just replace the I, J, K up here with the, the U. The U, X, U, Y, U, Z. All right? Do you see that now instead of an I, J, K right here, we've got a U, X, U, Y, U, Z. And you see how that is essentially dotting my values. So so the, the the thing I do differently is instead of having an I J K across here and an I J K right here, I will have I'll plug in that U. Right, I'll go ahead and plug in that U. And then when I do the determinant and do the cross product, there are no more right, no more I's, J's, or K's these are all numbers, and so these are all numbers, and so I can just add, right? I can just add to one value, one value, and that is the magnitude of the moment that I wanted. All right, one last thing, though. One last thing. This equation, and I've been emphasizing, I can't emphasize enough, this equation gives you the magnitude of the moment about an axis, all right? It's not a vector. But what if it asks for it as a vector? What if it asks for the moment as a vector? Well, here's a hint right here. Uh, we, we have the magnitude of the moment of the axis. Let's call it BC. Um, and we also have the unit vector of the axis. 
we can just take the magnitude times the unit vector. So the magnitude would be, sorry, the, the moment as a vector would be the magnitude times the u right here. So for instance, again, if, if we're looking at BC, this would be the magnitude of BC times the unit vector of BC equals the vector, the moment about axis BC. Whew. Okay? Magnitude of the moment about an axis is U dot R cross F. Let's do some problems.